What's up, beautiful people? This is Nadir. This is Kev. Two thirds of the super group that is Games Music Life. We're back with a review for this Kid Cudi album today. Yes. Passion, Pain, and Demon Slaying. Man, you know what I'm saying? Mr. Solo Dolo. Mr. Solo Dolo. The man Dolo. on the moon. Was you nervous about this project? Uh, maybe a little bit, but, but uh, you know, he, leading up to it, he had been saying that he was going back to his man on the moon style. Okay. He was linking back up with Plain Pat. Mm hmm you know, we were going to get that old Cuddy back. So I was I was hopeful for this album. People you know say that, though, and a lot of times they try to get it and they never recapture that moment. Man, I think... It, this is Mr. Rager right it here. It is Mr. Bro. Rager, but I mean, coming off the last album, man, that rock album, that was... Oof. Hey, yeah, I mean, oof. that was his best Nirvana impression. You I'll tell you what got me scared, though. On that album, he didn't have a shirt on, and on this album, he didn't have a shirt on. <laughs> so I didn't know what to expect going in. He's in the same zone. Same well, zone. Hey, man, we'll get into it. Okay, so, you know, this is six sixth album for Cuddy. Um, this album is off his rock album. Speeding Bullet to Heaven, guest appearance on his album are Andre 3000, Travis Scott, Pharrell, and Willow Smith. Yeah. Yeah, J Jaden uh, Smith's sister. Um, the lead singles on this one was Frequency and Surfing. This is a double CD. He had mentioned on Twitter that he was going to release two projects this year. I think maybe his hiatus when he had his mental breakdown kind of mm -hmm. messed with that. So instead, he just released it on one project. Um, he combined both CDs on one project. This album is a double CD and is broken down into four acts. Yeah. Kind of like a play. I thought that was kind of dope. Originally, Maybe. one of these discs was supposed to be Man on the Moon 3. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, now that you mention that, I guess I kind of can see that after listening to the album. Yeah. Okay. So let's get into it, man. Um, it broke, Like I said, the album's broken out into four acts. The first act is called Tuned. All right. So first track on the album, Frequency. What'd yeah. you think? Uh, man, I thought uh, Cuddy was kicking off the album uh, in a real good way. Teaming back up with Plain Pat, I thought was dope. And uh, gave us a sound reminiscent of the Man on the Moon series. So I was hyped. You know what I'm saying? I was pumped coming into the album. Uh, Cuddy was setting the tone with, uh, you know, him spitting about girls, drugs, being a rock star. You know, his basic frequency. So I liked it. I liked it for a good kickoff. Okay. Yeah. I, I kind of mirror your sentiments. I mean, I love the beat. Good start to the album. The voice quarter was real heavy on this one. Um, I couldn't make out some of the crooning, but it kind of got you on set as far as just, just setting the tone for the old Cuddy coming back. Yeah. He did, you know, that was it. I mean, as far as that crooning sound that you hear um, was definitely it's definitely indicative of Cuddy back in the day, you know, his earlier stuff. And he kind of got away from that. And, you know, just to start the album, I think it was a great start. Yeah, man. Bring it back playing Pat and Emilio, man. Exactly. They needed him back in the pocket. Exactly. Not the genius. Okay. So track two, Swim in the Light. <laughs> The chorus seemed to repeat throughout the track to me. Like it kind of like he wanted to get those words across more than anything. Yeah. Um, when the lyrics started, the beat broke down. I felt it was very dope. Uh, this one had me nodding my head. The lyrics were okay. Seemed like he was delivering a message on this one. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, with it, man, I felt like it was a really dramatic track. Uh, it had those real deep synth sounds in there. Uh, and I actually found out it was produced solely by Cuddy. Yep. Yep. He did. He did the whole track himself. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Scotty dives into dealing with depression and uh, realizing that drugs weren't going to be the answer to his depression. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, just kind of coming to terms with that. Uh, but sonically, I felt like everything was working. Yo, you, you, the word you say sonically, I think throughout the album, that kind of fit the mold a lot of times. And we'll get more into it, but it, just that word stuck out to me when you said it. Yeah. Um, track three. Releaser. Releaser. What'd you think? Uh, man, another dark, eerie track, which uh, Cuddy's, you know what I'm saying, known for. Uh, he speaks, again, about his battles with drugs and depression. Uh, his vocal performance on here was really good, in my opinion. Um I felt like he really gave you the emotion in the track and it coupled perfectly with the production. So, you know, again, I feel like this act, he was he was tying it with a nice bow. Okay. This act seemed to be real dark. And then, and like, it kind of like goes into like maybe like happy times and then kind of accepting times. But this this act, like I, this song I had written down was, um had an evil cadence. That's yeah. what it, like, it's just evil. It sounded like if it was like the theme song to somebody's evil in a movie or something. Um. His voice was a little dreary on this one. I couldn't understand. Maybe he was speaking in French at one point. Because at one point, I didn't understand if it was French or English. I do think he had some bars in there in French. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, I'm not tripping. Which okay. was a theme throughout the album. He did that a couple times. He did a couple times. Well, yeah. this one, it stood out more. I think um, because I couldn't really understand some of the even the English words he was saying. I didn't know if the whole song was in French at one point or not. Um, but I did, I did think it was decent. Like I said, it was an evil track to me. The background vocals were very dope. Yeah. And the beat was, um, you know, kind of just lower down. It just sounded like it was like he was in a dark time. Like, if anything, it just sounded like the darker times of what he was going through in his in his hiatus or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. So, track four, uh, The Design, featuring Andre 3000. Upbeat track. Um, had like an island vibe to it, almost. Had me nodding my head from jump. Uh, Cuddy's voice was very clear. And he ushers in Andre 3000, which he does what he does. Um they both have a singing cadence on this one. So it wasn't really like they were rapping. They were kind of like singing more than anything. Um, but I love the track. 
Yeah, man. Uh, Amir, your sentiment on that, man. I, I really felt like I had a dance vibe on this uh, track. I felt like Cuddy was kind of picking back up the tempo where the last two songs were, you know, a bit darker. Um, so he was trying to lighten the spirits on there. Um, and, you know, Cuddy just talking about trusting his process and his style. Okay. Uh, I felt like Andre 3000 was, uh, well, you know, Andre Benjamin. Yes. Excuse me. Andre Excuse Benjamin. me. Yeah. Let me let me give proper credit. <laughs> but uh, I felt like he coupled perfectly with, uh, with Cuddy. You know, both of them having very unique styles, very... Uh, forward or futuristic sounds mm -hmm. i felt like he was a, a great feature for this uh for this song and for this album um i feel like uh they couple perfectly with their unorthodox style they and did. i would really actually be interested to hear them work together more in the future maybe even put out a project together i think that could be dope yeah you know what's crazy is too i said the same thing and like there's two you know uh, andre 3000 features on this album yeah. later in the album we'll get more into that and there's two pharrell so and we'll, we'll talk about more of that more of that too um okay so track five all in um, kind of a techno beat. Um, it made me want to fist pump. It made me just want to just, just fist pump as hard as I could, like I was Jersey Shore, in a dance in a corner by myself. That's what it had me wanting to do. Um, once again, Cuddy's voice is clear, and he seems as if he wanted to get a message off in this one, too. Talks about all in with the female. Like, you know, basically, I'm all in with you, you know? Yeah. So I don't know if it's maybe he fell in love. Maybe it was a girl he met in his, you know, just in, in a chapter of life. I don't know. But all in definitely spoke on just being all in with a female. Um, but I liked it. I liked this track. Yeah, man. I felt like this track had a really futuristic sound uh, or, you know, vibe on it. Uh, it actually, to me, sounded like like deep space exploration, okay. which, uh, you know, fits in with, I mean, it's the man on the moon. Come yeah, on. Yeah. Uh, Cuddy, again, you know, reaffirming his commitment or, you know, his uh, dedication to repairing a fractured relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, just kind of take you through that journey and the emotions on there. Uh, again, I, I felt like it really fit the vibe of Act One. Okay. Yep. Okay, so Act 1 ended on that one. It started Act 2, Prophecy. Okay, so it goes into that. The first track on that one was number 6, Illusions. What do yeah. you think? Uh, I love the dramatic drums that were on here, coupled with the keys on the track. Uh, Cuddy was coming in, you know, with his signature man on the moon crooning uh, as he was spitting about his trips and how liberating they could actually be in times, which yeah. uh, which was a bit of a flip from what he was talking about earlier in the uh, in the album, you know, on songs like Release or Swim in the Light. Um you know, I, I thought that that was kind of cool how he was showing both sides of the coin for him or, you know, kind of giving you a little insight into why he was doing what he was doing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even though he knows that he shouldn't be going down that road, sometimes it gave him a bit of clarity. So I, I really thought that that introspection was dope. I mm -hmm. thought it was a killer track. Yeah, he definitely got personal on this one. I think if this one um, was stood out to me, the beat was very fire. Heavy bass, kind of a techno feel once again. Yeah. Um, Cuddy was back in his whispering pocket again, which was which was which but it was clear, though. So it was like he was whispering to, kind of to the point where like he's sitting in a chair and just talking to you about why he did some of the things he was doing. He speaks on the illusions in his head. The track was kind of dark. Um, and he talked about one line on there. He talked. He said at 23, he finally heard the frequency. Yeah. So I don't know if that was really like him a waking up point or, you know, he was in his own lane. He talks about frequencies a lot. He does. Like he was in like and I think that that's maybe his trips. <laughs> that he was on yeah. because I mean one thing about it is Cuddy's music he kind of he, he hides not you know behind it he, he did some drugs you yeah, know so I mean, and uh, he kind of lets you know that and he's in his own head at times yeah. I thought the track was very personal I, I, I really enjoyed this one yeah it was definitely dope yeah but it was about drugs this track was about D-Rugs absolutely okay all right, so track seven, the golden, uh, the Rose golden, golden, Rose Gold. I'm sorry, Rose Gold, and featuring Willow Smith. Yeah, what did you think? Man, that was my favorite track. On my the favorite album. track on the whole album. Yeah, my the whole album. Track I like. I literally, I listened to this track about four or five times. I like, love it. Willow I almost, that, she almost shed the thug. Yo, job, man. she did her thing. Yeah, man. she did. She coupled perfectly with yes, him on there, man. Yes, she did. But go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, go ahead. No, you're good, man. Mm -hmm. I, I loved it. It had a really strong, triumphant sound. Uh, it, it was, it was almost cinematic mm -hmm. the way that that uh, track kind of played out. I loved Willow and Cuddy on the hook singing together. Uh, you know, just talking about trusting yourself and how much power and each and every one of us uh, even when we don't realize it or see it, uh, it the song just really had such a good vibe to it man and they both just killed it like that that song is amazing i love it yeah man i said the same thing man this track starts off very dope with cuddy and willow doing the chorus overlapping each other's voice and that to me was just dope in its own right yeah um it rides into the beat very well and it's very dope the violin you already know how i am about violins yeah man. you know the violin just ushered me in man the, it, the strings would made it sound so cinematic yes it did it sounded yeah. very cinematic um it ushered in Cuddy's voice. I'm a sucker for a good violin. Cuddy's, Cuddy's lyrics were once again personal, and it spoke on his life. Um, Willow's background vocals in the second verse were so just amazing to me. Yeah. Like, I don't know if it was a voice coder or her voice is really that good, because I've read that she's actually a very good singer. Um, you know, maybe background vocals will be her thing. I don't know if I want to hear a whole Willow Smith project. So. <laughs> um, but Cuddy speaks on the stars and the frequency once again um, a lot. It's my favorite track so far on the album. Yeah. Okay. 
There right. we go. So track eight, Baptized in Fire, featuring Travis Scott. Yeah. I'd heard this one before, um, and it was definitely an ode to his dad, which Travis Scott is Kid Cudi's son. <laughs> um, and I think be, being a big Travis Scott fan, because Birds in the Night was one of my favorite albums of the year this year, um, it made it easier to digest this album yeah. for me. And I'm going to get more into that later on. But it definitely, I didn't really, it didn't click that Travis sounded so much like Cudi until I started hearing them on the album together. And Cuddy had a, I'm sorry, Travis had a, a track on his album with Cuddy, which was so dope. And I think that kind of precursored what we were going to expect to this album. Absolutely. Because it was old Cuddy on that. Yeah. And it was like old to the old Cuddy as far as the day and night theme that was on that album. Um, but I had heard this one. This was the first track I heard from the project, actually. And this one kind of had me anticipating the album. I thought it was a very dope track. Yeah. Um, you know, I thought it uh, was a really good track, man. It had some really moody sense, tra- coupled with some trap drums. So I felt like it was the perfect marriage of uh, Cuddy sound with Travis's sound, you know, even though you know Travis is Cuddy Jr but yeah, yeah. it is what it is uh, I felt like Cuddy killed his verses talking about how hard it can be to find people in the world to vibe with or yes. to trust or on the same frequency mm-hmm. uh, but instead learning to trust himself and uh, work through his own demons mm-hmm. the only thing I'll say about this man is though I didn't think Travis was bad on this song he was mm-hmm. kind of forgettable like it, he was he it's didn't not, really add much to it no he didn't and when like even on, on Travis's album it sounded more of a Cuddy track featuring Travis, Travis. on his album on yeah. this one it sounded like a Cuddy track featuring Travis but it was more of a Cuddy sound because even did you notice how Travis's voice came off real clear yeah and Cuddy's voice came off kind of dreary a little bit it like did. it did on purpose almost I could tell absolutely okay all right, so track nine, uh, Flight at First Sight uh, Advanced is a transition featuring Pharrell. Yep. What do uh, you think? Man, I thought it had a, a really futuristic, up-tempo dance vibe on this track uh, with some uh, a really distinct Neptune sound. Like, you could tell as soon as you hear this song that Pharrell had his hand <laughs> in that. You're my notes, man. You're my, <laughs> you know my notes right now. Like, Pharrell had his hand in that. Uh, sounds like they were working with, uh, uh, like, how Pharrell goes about his production style is so unorthodox. I, and you know, I, I've always felt know, like Pharrell didn't get the credit that he deserves, man. Like, he worked in dial tones. It yeah. made it work. Like, I, yeah. how do you do that, man? Uh, uh, but, you know, it was dope. It was dope. Uh, I enjoyed Cuddy's storytelling of uh, falling in love at first sight, kind of putting a bit of a different spin on it, uh, and he had a bouncy sing-songy flow. Again, man, everything was working on this track. I loved the transition uh, into the uh, song Advanced. Mm-hmm. It, it, man, okay. yeah, it knocked out the park. I said the same thing, man. Like, literally, the first... 14, 15 seconds you tell us a Pharrell beat. Yeah. Even if you didn't have it written down and knowing that Pharrell did it, like somebody robbed Pharrell's style if it wasn't him. Right. Um, the the influence is like, Pharrell's influence on production is just so deep to me. You can listen to a Pharrell track and know it's him. And um, with this one, it was no different. The transition was very dope into a heavy bass beat. Pharrell's portion was, you know, I didn't know. Could you tell if it was Pharrell or Cuddy spitting on the part? Uh, I, I believe it was pretty much Cuddy taking the I lead. I think it was Pharrell Cuddy, might right? have had some background vocals okay. in there, but okay. yeah, I don't think he really had too much lend in there. Okay. It was a very funky track. I did, uh, one of my, one gripe I will say through it is like, portion through at the end, I couldn't really understand what Cuddy was saying. Yeah. Some of the coder that he chose on that one, it wasn't a, a clear voice. It was kind of like, um, you know, it's real dreary. I couldn't understand what he was saying. So that my only gripe on that track would be that. But once again, a decent track. Yeah. All right. Track 10. Um, Let's see. Which track? Does, Does it? it? The beat was kind of a techno feel. Cuddy's voice is kind of hard to make out on this one. He's what he's saying at times on this one. I, I kind of once again, kind of ending with the last track, starting to this one. I couldn't make out some of the things he was saying. But when you can make it out what he's saying, he's talking his ish. Yeah, Cuddy was on his on his soapbox on this one. Absolutely, the chorus does the same exact thing. Um, it sounded kind of like a Diddy sample almost. I don't know if that was Diddy <laughs> on the chorus or maybe it was it was Cuddy, but it was it was definitely like him talking to some people. Yeah, you know, talking to some people, and um, you know, decent track. Yeah, man. Uh, first thing that hit me with this track, man, is it just got such a heavy bass. It's like it, it just comes out and hits you right in the face to kick the track off. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really like the theatrical keys and the horns that are in the background. Uh, they give the track a bit of a, an adventurous vibe. Felt like, you know what I'm saying, you were in a space odyssey. You know what I'm saying, maybe in a deep space jungle, just it, on an adventure, just going through it. Uh, now, with it, to me, this was the closest that Cuddy had gotten to rapping on mm-hmm. this uh, on this actual album. A lot of singing. At to this point, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, uh, on that first verse. Because he leads in with a little bit of singing, but then uh, then he slows it down a bit and just kind of kicks a little bit of a rhyme. Uh, sounds a little bit messy to me. Yes. But uh, but it does work. Do you think um, it was on purpose, though? It's hard to tell with Cuddy sometimes. <clears throat> like Now, I'll get into this later on, on and uh, kind of close it out, but Cuddy... It can be his his own worst enemy mm-hmm. with uh, with a lot of the uh, humming yeah, that he does yeah. a lot of times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He does that a lot, and sometimes it can be it can make the song sound a little bit muddy. But mm-hmm. it's all good. But uh, okay. I felt like this track was closing out the second act uh, with Cuddy vowing to dominate and triumph. So I, I thought that that was dope. Okay, 
So it leads into the third act of the album, um, Nouveau de Lamar. Yes, Levels of Love. Levels, that's what that means? Yes. That's what I'm talking about. My boy doing this research. <laughs> man. I didn't know what the heck was said. I, I was making, I just happy I got the name right. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You knocked yeah. it out the park, man. Okay. All right. So it leads into track 11, Dance for Eternity. Yeah. What'd you think? Uh, man, you know, starting off this third act, uh, the track starts off with like some hot, ha- some fast, uh, kind of house drums and some slow haunting organs. Okay. Uh, only Cuddy would do something like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Only, like, maybe only him could pull that off, man. You know what? That's been kind of the signature of the stamp of his style since mm-hmm. he's came in the game. Like he's always been trying to push the envelope, go forward and yeah. uh, have a different sound, which I'll get into that as well. Okay. Uh, cold, uh, Cuddy's vocals to me got a little bit whiny on this song yeah. as he was singing about you know a girl he's really digging uh, song is cool but I felt like it may have benefited from some supporting vocals maybe something to kind of lift that track up a bit yeah. uh, sounds a little bit empty as it is but yeah yeah, I definitely to mirror your thought I definitely think he could have had some backgrounds from somebody just coming in there and I think kind of like even mirroring our last review on J. Cole Cuddy kind of gets into his own way on trying to do everything on the track. Sometimes. Yeah, I think on this one it could have definitely done with maybe even a female vocals on in the background. Not so much the dominant voice. Just somebody that came in and gave a little offering on the album, on that song, I should say. Yeah. Um, it's an upbeat track. Cuddy's speaking to a girl. He don't enjoy spending time with her. He seems like both of them are just having fun. and They're doing drugs, definitely. <laughs> and um, just have, having fun, as he explains it. Yeah. So I thought it was a solid track. It fit the album. I just, like you said, it definitely felt empty. But to be track 11 and only have the first track seeming kind of empty it definitely is a good doing you know, pretty good doing yeah. pretty good so far all right so track 12 distant fantasies yeah um this was kind of a funny track to me um hearing cuddy in this lane was just kind of funny to me um he's talking to a girl about how she is hanging with another guy and how she is not keeping it real with him and how you know going back they keep going back and forth sometimes they mess around each other sometimes they don't she goes back to the other guy he's like that guy can't treat you like i can blah 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 the beat is heavy it kind of had like an alien vibe yeah it's one thing about i just like i wrote down was alien vibe in this song um, sounded like an like an infomercial for like foil hats, almost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but what'd you think of it though? Oh uh, man, you know I did like the way this track kicks off. It starts off with like this trippy deep synth and a really low bass. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Cuddy spitting just like you said, spitting about a girl that he's uh, been dealing with or that he used to deal with, uh, and now she maybe moved on, got another man. But you know, what I'm saying she know she yeah. know he ain't the cut. Right. You know right, what I'm right, saying? Yeah. Sometimes he's talking his issue on this. Sometimes though. that's yeah. a downfall. You know, what I'm saying dating a dude so dope. You know, what I'm saying I know, <laughs> uh, you know, what I'm saying that was actually one of the lines on there. So I yeah. thought that that was kind of cool. Uh-huh. But uh, <laughs> you know, I, I thought that uh, the song had a really haunting sound uh, that fit the vibe but again Cuddy's vocals still weren't powerful enough to carry the track uh, mm-hmm. but I did like when he was spitting on the track though yeah so yeah okay no doubt all right so track 13 wounds yeah what'd you think uh man wounds comes in with some really crispy drums and Cuddy just wailing <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's going into it Cuddy singing about trying to overcome personal obstacles to become the best version of himself mm-hmm. uh, I really like the breaks and transitions on this track uh Cuddy gives a decent vocal performance on there and it uh it fits the track well with all the emotion that he's pushing out. Um, he's got a, a bit in there where he's got uh, a little bit of auto tone or a vocoder on there. Kind of gave me a Bon Iver vibe. I I wish that we maybe got a little bit more of that throughout the track to kind of break up the sound a little bit. But again, really deep, uh, good personal track. You know, I always I'm a sucker for introspection yeah. in any of my music, so yeah. I really like that. Okay, definitely getting the artist to pull us into their world is definitely always a good thing, man. The beat was fire. Um, he had me really listen to the lyrics, just just a beat, his voice, everything kind of was like a perfect puzzle on this one. Um, I love the track. I definitely loved how personal he got on it. And like you say, kind of making himself a better person and kind of the pathways of what he was doing to get so. It kind of like mirrored as far as what he was going through maybe at the time. I don't know if this was an older track or a newer track, but yeah. it definitely was personal. I loved it. Yeah, it was All good. Right. So Mature Nature. Um, this one, okay. So it seemed like the chorus kind of went on too long. Or went on for the entire track. Like it was just kind of the chorus over and over and over, and it kind of drilled me in. Like it was almost like indoctrination. Almost. <laughs> um, the beat was not bad or ge- or or good. It, this was my first Kanye shrug of the album. I was just like, yeah, I could do with it or do without it. Yeah, you know. So that's what I felt about that one. Oh uh, man, you know what? Actually, for me, I really like this beat. Uh, mm-hmm. There's a lot going on, but to me, it was working. Uh, first thing that kind of catches my ears are the strings in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cuddy stays in a good pocket vocally. You know, kind of. I, I do feel what you're saying about the repetition, and that does get a little bit old in there. But I really felt what he was saying, and you know, kind of talking about wanting to be in a good spot in life with a woman that he's with. Uh, you know, wanting to go into a more mature relationship or kind of take that next step in a relationship, mm-hmm. uh, learning to enjoy each other's company, not 
you know, doing it for the the glitz and the glam. You know, you don't have to take a picture every time you're out doing something, man. Just just enjoying the moment mm-hmm. and learning to live in the moment together. Uh, I thought that that was dope, and it actually showed a lot of maturation on Cuddy's part, okay. in my opinion. So okay. I, I thought it was cool. Okay. Well, it ushers in the next track, Kitchen. Um, what do you yeah. think about this one? Uh, man, he kicks off Kitchen uh, mm-hmm. with some flourishing strings and some really crispy drums. As Cuddy was singing about how hard it can be to find somebody that fits in with his personality and lifestyle, kind of mirroring uh, mature nature. You know, in mature nature, he's kind of talking about the the ideal relationship that he wants. And then in Kitchen, he's talking about how hard it can actually be to find somebody to, get, you know, be in a relationship the way that he wants it to. Mm-hmm. Um, there's, you know... A lot going on there, but uh, he, he wants to keep it simple. I'm not crazy about the song, though. I okay. got to be honest. Okay. This one was a little bit different to me, man. The beat was good. Uh, the violin, once again, pulled me back in. I definitely like that. Uh, Cuddy's lyrics speak, speaks on love and how, you know, quote, if you can't stay in the, heart, the heat of his love, stay out of the kitchen, which I thought was very dope. The violin highlight towards the end was super dope to me, and, I, and I'm a sucker for a good violin. Um, he was subtweeting somebody on this one, Yeah, I feel. Um, some model was somewhere tight over this one, or... This was, first of all, it was produced by um, Janae Aiko's ex-husband. Okay, he was the one yeah, who produced Dr. this. Genius. Yeah, Dr. Genius, who produced this track. I don't know if he was, if that was Dr. Genius talking to Janae. Hmm. I think Cuddy might have been a vessel. Hey, maybe. I know Cuddy jumped in there when, he did. Uh, when things got messy. So. He did. He yeah. definitely did, which was kind of odd. It got weird real quick. All hey. right. So it goes into the next one. So this one actually leads to the final act of the album, which is The Bright in Heaven is Warm. Is the title of this act. Yep. All right. So leads into uh, track 16, Cosmic Warrior. Yep. I love this song. I literally like, I mean, Cuddy was singing with so much energy on this one, man. Once again, it was it was produced by Janae Aiko's ex-husband. Yep. Okay. The beat was fire. Um, Janae Aiko's ex-husband, I keep calling him her ex-husband. Uh, <laughs> Dot the Genius is his name. Yeah. Um, he shines with a production. This one was, um, this one's to her and Big Sean. Yeah. I'm convinced. I'm convinced this one was written for that. Um, I have no idea what Cuddy was attempting to say. Or know what Cosmic Warrior is, um, but I love the track. So the fact that I didn't know what he was saying or even know what he was trying to get across, but it still was it was a dope track. Cuddy was very clear. He sounded so energetic singing wise on this one. All right, so uh, for Cosmic Warrior, now this was the beginning of Act Four of the album. Uh, it's bright and heaven is warm, which I felt like was a play on DMX's "It's dark and hell is hot." Mm-hmm. So I thought that that was cool. Uh, the track has a really just grand production on there with Cuddy really trying to push his vocals. Um, talking about, you know, knowing his journey would lead him to be the man on the moon. And uh, I thought that that was dope. He's the Cosmic Warrior. Yeah. Uh, track really sounds like it's a movie. So I thought that that was dope. Okay. All right. So it leads into track 17, the guy featuring Andre 3000, the second Andre 3000 feature. Yep. What would you think? Uh, with it, man, really heavy electro vibe on this track. Uh, Cuddy was continuing his space journey or, you know, the space theme throughout it. Uh, track really speaks on... Uh, you know, being passionate about a woman that uh, that he knows that he wants. Andre uh, kills his verse, steals the show, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Cuddy provides really great support in there. Uh, beat gets a little messy at times again, but they bring it back with the verses. So it was cool. Okay. I mean, I, in, to mirror your sentiments, man, Jury Beat, it seems like he was speaking to a female once again, mm-hmm. which is the third track produced by Dr. Genius, <laughs> speaking to a female. He's not slick, but we'll get into that later on. Um, once again, um, you know, Andre comes in, definitely delivers, just does what he does, man. At this point, we've heard a lot of features from Andre 3000 this year. He's teasing us so much. Just give us a Yo, project in 2017. I don't think it's coming, but it's I, cool. I think, if anything, maybe Cuddy couldn't, inspire him to do something i mean the fact that he got two features on here is kind of telling yeah so i don't know we'll see but i did i love this track all right so track 18 the commander <clears throat> the beat was dope cutty's voice is clear not using the voice coder, voice coder on this one had me tap my foot i will say um cutty is singing once again with a lot of energy on this one this last act it seemed like a lot of energy kind of like maybe he found himself yeah maybe that's what he was saying um but a solid track nonetheless Man, again, I felt like it had a really spacey vibe on there, man. Uh, the track makes you feel like like you're in the control center of a spaceship, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying, guiding through your journey. Uh, the <laughs> track reminds me of Heart of a Lion from uh, Cuddy's first album, which okay. I thought was dope. Kind of kicked it back to the uh, to the old Cuddy and just reaffirms that, you know, you're in control of your own life or, you know, you're the commander. Absolutely. So I okay. thought it was dope. That's was very good introspect, man. I like that. All right, so number 19, Surfing. Once again, featuring Pharrell to end the album. What do yeah. you think? Man, I felt like Pharrell bodied the production on that track, man. <laughs> <laughs> the drums and the horns, man, definitely how you bobbing your head, tapping your foot. Mm-hmm. So uh, it was just a fun vibe. I thought it was a great way to close out the album for Cuddy, man. Showed that he was in a good space. Cuddy rapping about, you know, not wanting to follow in anybody else's footsteps or wanting to bite anybody else's style, man. Just doing his own thing like he's done his whole career. Again, man, great way to end off the album, man. I love that track. Okay. Once again, like you said, man, it was a throwback vibe almost. Kind of like throwback, you know, tender as far as the the, the sound of it. Yeah. But it's a Pharrell sound once again. You could tell within the first 45 to a minute, it's a Pharrell track. Um, very upbeat. Um, production by Pharrell. I mean, I don't know why you was expecting anything different, but it's top notch. 
Um, I could hear every instrument. It just had me want to get up and dance, man. This track was, it was, it was, it was a shock. Cuddy was talking <laughs> to some people on this. Oh man, he was letting them know. He was, you know he was definitely doing his I own mean, thing. One of the lines man. on here, he says, "I'm, I'm riding, I'm not riding no waves. I'm riding my own wave." Cuddy was letting people know, man, he's back and he's in, on his own lane. Yeah, you know. So I definitely thought that he was um, to end the album. It was almost like you know, starting the beginning of Act One, which was kind of dreary, drug induced. To now, it's like maybe I might still do some drugs, but let you know, I still am the man on the moon. <laughs> I think that's what he was telling people at the end of the album. Yeah, you know. So all in all. What did you think? I'll let you go first. Uh, You know, for me, the album was really solid, but I have to be honest, I could have done without Act 3. Mm -hmm. uh, I felt like that was the weakest point in the album. Yes. One thing that really <laughs> caught me off, off guard on this album, man, there was so much bass. Like, listening to it mm -hmm. in the car, man, this whole album was just booming through and through, which... It's surprising for Cuddy, you know, that wasn't ever his stamp, but it really worked for him. Uh, he stayed true to form, he updated his sound, but he stuck with his sound, and... Uh, Keeps trying to push the culture of the sound forward, which I always appreciate Cuddy for. Uh, feels really good to have this Cuddy back, man. We're getting away from, uh, you know, Satellite Flight, Wizard, Speeding Bullet to Hell, Cuddy. You know what I'm saying? We're getting the man on the moon back. So right. I'm really excited about that, man. Overall, I rated this album out at an 87. Okay. Okay, man. You on my notes, man. I swear <laughs> to goodness, man. So I had a lot of things written down about this one, actually. Um, being a big fan of Travis Scott, man, it made it kind of easy, once again, for me to digest this album. And it kind of, I never really correlated as far as Travis Scott sounding like Kid Cudi, but maybe because Kid, you know, Cudi was gone for that time, that it really reminded me of how dope Kid Cudi was again. Yeah. Um, Cudi, in my opinion, is just back, man. I hope he stays in this lane. I hope he doesn't venture off in more rock albums and doesn't go into a dark place. I, I don't want to contribute at all to being in a dark place. I thought he was reaching on some of the old albums, like that rock album. The last one was completely garbage, and I don't want to ever see bullet to hell, man. That was that, that was, was tough. that was that bad. was tough to listen to. Um, you know, and Cuddy and his dad. I mean, Cuddy being the dad, Travis being the son. <laughs> I think he would even admit that, though. Yeah, I think you know, Travis would admit that. I mean, Cuddy done birthed a lot of people's style, though. Yeah, he did. So and that's I had that written down as well. Um, you know, definitely reminded me of that project. I feel Kanye stole Cuddy's wave on Pablo, and I I think if Cuddy would have put his influence on that Pablo album, and we take away those whack Kanye verses on that Pablo album, it might have been a decent album. Kanye right. ruined that album, but I don't care. We'll get, we'll get more back into that more lately. But I do think that Kanye tried to steal Cuddy's wave. And I think, I don't know if something, the relationship went awry at that point because they made up super quick. Maybe Kanye admitted it. I think Kanye wrong. would admit to that. I mean, 808 yeah. and Heartbreak is Cuddy. So it is. It, it is, is what it is. And Birds in the Trap, when I listened to it, I went back and listened to Birds in the Trap, which was Travis Scott's album once yeah. again. And it was like, wow, man, the influence of Cuddy on there was, was definitely um, you know there. But one thing I will point out, though, is Dr. Genius, you're not slick. <laughs> okay, during the end of track, um, the end of Act Three, starting off Act Four, that was him talking to his ex-wife. I don't care, like, he, and he wrote those a lot of portion of those um, on those songs. The beat was definitely good, but um, and maybe Cuddy was going through the same kind of similar thing at the time. But um, you know, you're not slick on that one. I didn't, you didn't get past me on that one. Um, two Andre features on the album, two Pharrell features on the album. Speaks on how Cuddy really is like has a. People love him, man. Yo, I felt like he he picked artists that really fed his style, man. Just yes. that really unorthodox, uh, unique sounds, and mm -hmm. he did great. I mean, I, I felt like Willow stole the show. Low she key. did, man. Yo, so I, I, would you would you want to hear a whole project from her though? I ain't gonna go that far. Exactly. But, uh, That's what I'm saying. I don't know but I would I, I would I would definitely listen to more singles. Yeah, definitely. She she did her thing, man. Um, yeah. definitely a, a great body of work. Um, one thing I, I is is gonna get lost in the sauce is this album is 85, 87 minutes worth of music. Yeah, it's an hour and a half almost. So it's like. I don't know if some of those songs get lost and lost with some people where they're not going to hear the whole you thing. You cut Act 3, and I think it ranks Act higher. 3 definitely was was the low point, and I think that was kind of like his his kind of upstream. Because like I said, it was started off low, and it started like going up. I think Act 3, like you said, could get out of here. Um, but it, all in all, very solid project, man. I gave it an 86. Oh, nice. So we definitely were on par with that one. Hey, that's how it yeah. goes, man. So Kid Cudi's back, man. I Absolutely. think he uh, definitely is going to put some people in a, in a lane at the end of that, but... I'm willing, you know, I'm definitely looking to see what's going to come from him, you know, later on. If you're an early Cuddy fan, I think that you'll appreciate the project for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. But all right, man, thanks for rocking with us. This is Nate here. This is Kev, man. As usual, let us know what you think. Yeah, hey, exactly. Always. Put the comment in the below. Out of zero to 100, like a grade in the paper. Let us know what you think, man. We're definitely, we answer all questions and we'll definitely come back and see what people think. But yeah. um, thanks for rocking with us, man. Drink more water, people. Peace. Peace.